So we finally have Stronghold Week returning. This means you want to be spending all of those resources and donating to your guild and on top of that buying a certain amount of items. So let's cover everything in this video. But first, some very good news. Well, well, it could be bad on one side, but the consumables that you get for your guild marks in your stronghold, you can see, you can speak to this vendor just here. If you haven't done so before, you'll get that initial quest, but she will sell you consumables, which is all of this food. And you can spend, as you can see there, a base cost of 350 marks for one piece of the top tier food. You can see there are lesser variants of this food, just giving less stats. And you can see all of them are pretty underwhelming. For example, you look at your chocolate. It only gives 1,400 hit points along with only 286 awareness. Those stats compared to the amount we need and the amount we have is absolutely minuscule and it's not worth currently the cost that it is to actually buy them, except perhaps for your Sambocade, since it gives 5% additional movement speed. It would be nice if each of these different foods, for example, again, your chocolate, would give 5% awareness, much like Sambocade giving 5% movement speed. And then you'd have other food as well. For example, this ratatouille would give like 5% accuracy, or your prime rib should give like your 5% power. Now it has been announced, thankfully, finally, that th that food is actually going to be getting adjusted. As you can see by Neverwinter's Twitter post, improvements to the stronghold and chult foods purchased from the barmaid will be available in an upcoming patch. Look out for patch notes next week for additional details, with then just a screenshot of all the different foods there. Now, what does it mean by the food in Chult? Well, similarly to all this stuff, you can head over to Chult, Port Nyanzaru, and heading out of the docks into the main square, you can see there's this vendor right here under the tent, and she will sell you similar food for, as you can see, just astral diamonds. Again, if this food got bumped up to give like 5% of additional stat, it could give like this one 2%. I would like this to be on par with the stronghold food just to give people options to buy it with Astro Diamonds rather than having to grind and spend guild marks. But hopefully this gets to a usable state and then we can have additional benefits for our characters. On the flip side, I'm personally not a big fan of consumable items, things that drain as you use them, because then when you play the game, you know if you're wasting time playing the game, you're like spending extra resources, like bar food, like overloads, those kind of things, which makes it in a way kind of not so fun to play when you're, let's say, trying to be patient for other players to learn mechanics. And so every moment in combat, you know, is like ticking down the time on your overloads. And so you don't want that. And then you become stingy with your time even more so. And thus you become more impatient and want to just get through content as quickly as possible. And that's the same with consumables as well. Fortunately, the majority of the ones I use, like Potency, Squash Soup, and Sun Lord's Gift Elixir, are pretty cheap and they're generally easy to sustain. And Guild Food does have the benefit of not expiring when you die. For example, let's say we're to just go and buy our Sambo K just here. And if we go and use that, so similarly, bloody hell, my inventory is a mess. Let's just go consumables only. And we can find that just here. We double click it and we can see then it's in our buff bar just here. Sambo K, we are sated with the benefiting from the effects of food. And if we're to go and die then and, let, and re release to revive, you can see that you still gain the benefit from the food. So unlike your flax of potency and your squash soup, you can still sustain the benefit and thus it's a true 30 minutes no matter how many times you die within that 30 minutes. So ultimately, yes, it's good that it's getting improvements because currently it's in an unusable state and that just means it's kind of a waste that exists in the game. So looking forward to that. But otherwise, we do have Stronghold Week and how 
do you make the most of it? Well, of course, you'll need to be in a guild to be able to make use of this. And then you can either be a part of alliance or then hop to a guild which has a bunch of structures upgraded. Of course, as you've just seen, you can spend your guild marks on this food. And right now we have a 20% off everything that you spend guild marks on. So I have like 24,000. You can spend it on food at this vendor. Again, it will depend on what stronghold you're in and how upgraded they are. Over here, you can speak to the outfitter, which really doesn't have much. Most of this is just fashion stuff. Like all this gear is pretty garbage. I would not bother investing guild marks into it. And then you can see you get some PVP gear. You can get some dragonflight gear here as well. Also all pretty garbage. I would only go for it if you want it as fashion. And then you can see you have the Arbiter PVP stuff. Also pretty garbage. Yeah, you, you just none of it's great. And then you have your artifacts, which very nicely has your stronghold set. And this is where you'd have to run like Dragonflight. Would recommend joining an active guild who runs Dragonflight generally. And you can get those Dragonflight fangs. You can see you only need like 25 of them per weapon here. And if you manage to get some banners from PvP, then you could spend that even less. And then you can see you can get a discount of 20% off the guild mark. So you could get your stronghold set right there. And currently that's like the best weapon set, especially for newer players, as you're supporting everybody along with yourself. And then we can see we can head over this way and we can have like this merchant just here the gem monger and this guy will sell you overloads. Now it will really depend on what content you're running. Usually I don't really bother with these, but if you're fighting like dragons or undead, there are those overloads and otherwise there isn't such great content which you can use potentially in Demogorgon. We'll have to test if they work against like the demons there and you could use the demon slayers, but yeah, they had a lot of bugs with them and the companion overloads. I don't know why they exist because yeah, they don't exist. Okay. It just mentions it. <laughs> Otherwise you can spend your guild marks over here on this guy. And this can be very profitable buying these scrolls, these explorer charts, and you can buy them for your Soshin star and your Omu. That's all chalt areas. And then all your Sharandar areas, and you can use those, but you need to save them. Like this is the prime time to buy them, to spend those guild marks. And then you save them for when we get double professions. And when you get double professions, you actually go and use those charts and you get twice as many rewards along with if you use the explore treasure hunter boon. And then you can gain four times the amount of rewards from each of those charts. And you can sell those ingredients on the auction house. And you have to look at the prices because they vary and fluctuate all the time and make the deductions of which charts you want to buy for those items within it. And so what do I discern as the best thing to spend those guild marks on? Well, if you don't already have a stronghold weapon set, I would recommend saving enough guild marks again, just to get that stronghold set from the outfitter where you would then spend quite a lot here, but you need to grind your dra dragonfly fangs. And otherwise you can make a decent amount of profit again through those scrolls from this guy right here. Save those scrolls again for double professions and you can make a lot of astral diamonds if you're buying the right ones and get lucky. And that's really about it you spend your guild marks on. But you can have a wandering merchant, which you can spend guild marks on as well, which I believe is generally spawned out the back here, just up here, which does have some gear. But again, I wouldn't really consider any of it other than with the regards to the fashion. You can see the stuff you can get here. It can look pretty cool. And you can see it is pretty random what you get every time you resummon this wandering merchant and it will cost your guild some resources to summon their wandering merchant and yeah otherwise i don't think it's too great there but again some fashion pieces you can pick up ultimately how do you obtain guild marks well this is the right time to also be trying to get guild marks as i believe we also have times two guild marks as you can see right here when you donate anything to your guild you will gain twice of the amount along with that whenever you obtain your influence so when you do your heroic encounters you will gain twice as much influence per heroic encounter so you can go on farm trains with your guild you're capped at a certain amount you can obtain per 
day of the amount of influence. You can also do marauders. There are definitely some guilds which will be actively doing those things. And you can see you'll get double the amount of influence within this week. So it's very good to farm it there. You'll also obtain double the amount of shards. You can see where you can obtain those. There are some of these quests which you can get to obtain those shards as well. Uh, along with getting them from like chests within the Zen market stronghold section. And you can see all these guys with their blue quests. So going to this guy, I believe, will reliably give you the shards for just doing your part, which is like a random advanced dungeon queue or a random expert queue. Yeah, I don't know why they haven't updated that, but that will give you some dungeoneering shards of power. And right now you gain double the amount of them. And there's some other NPCs you can also go to and they'll give you like some vouchers here. This guy will give you some shards of power and this guy will give you some more shards of power. And your guilds will need those to upgrade their building. So that will depend if you're in a guild which is not maxed out and they will need you to be farming these things. But ultimately what you want to do is make sure to spend all the vouchers you may have obtained just by playing the game. Some of them you can sell and be aware of that. They might be unbound and you could put them on the auction house. But the majority that I have obtained through like the Siege of Neverwinter event and so on, they are all bound to my character. So I can't do anything with them other than donate them. And so again, we're going to do that. You want to speak to this coffer just here. And you can see you need to find a guild will actually will want them, right? Right here, this guild is stock full of profession supplies. So I can't donate any of that. You could search through the rest, like uh, guilds on your alliance and maybe they aren't full. But yeah, most of ours are. And so we'll look at our other ones. Do we have other vouchers we can spend if they're not already full? Yeah, we have some tyranny vouchers we can spend just there. And we obtain twice the amount, as you can see due to the event. So this is high time to be spending and using those vouchers that you would have saved up. Outside of that, this is exactly why you save onto those vouchers. You want to be patient and use them then. It's the same with spending guild marks. You want to wait for this event because you're gaining that discount. So you're ending up getting a lot more for the worth of yeah what you would obtain normally. That's about it. What will I spend my guild marks on? Personally, I'm just going to hold on to them. I have like 25,000 on my other character. And yes, I could spend them on these scrolls, but I don't really, I don't have fun grinding out these scrolls at all. It's just boring to me. Yes, you can make a lot of profit by doing so, spending those reagents, and that's probably because it's boring and not everybody wants to do it. So there is that something there if you need to earn some extra astral diamonds on the side. Grind your daily influence from heroic encounters here. You can get groups together to do that, and every day you'll get a certain amount. I believe it's 500 from heroic encounters, and during times two, it's 1,000, and it's the same from Marauders. You get 500 and then 1,000. I'm not, don't quote me on those numbers. I haven't done this in quite a while, but yeah. Outside of that, that is how you make the most, I believe, of your Stronghold Week times two on the guild marks that you will obtain through donating and then twice as much of the influence shards etc that you do obtain and along with that we can go and also look forward to a buff an increase to the effectiveness of that guild food along with the other consumable food from enchult if you guys want i can make an overview video on what consumables you can actually use as there's quite a lot in the game which you can use but many of them will override each other for example i can't use caprice and squash soup at the same time because they're both an event food and so you can only have one of those type of active you can only have one elixir you can have only one potion you could only have one like guild food and so on so again special thank you to all of these channel members for their added support we'll see you guys around goodbye for now